Hello and welcome back. My name's Sarah and I'm a gamer who draws. Um, this was actually a requested video. If you have any requests for yourself, um, just drop them down in the comments down below. I read every single one and I will definitely make a video for you. So today we're going to be looking at how to draw clothes. So this was a requested video, but I thought it would be good to kind of go into depth with this topic. So this video will be split into three different sections. Um, the first section will be about different traits for materials. The second section will be about folds and how to draw different kinds of folds. And then the third section will be about materials and like how they feel and how that affects um, how they look. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. When I studied at the Oatly Academy, one of the main things that we were taught about clothes was to um, break different materials down into how they feel and how they're structured. So for example, you might have a fluffy feeling, soft structured material. Um, or you might have a shiny feeling, stiff structured material. I'm pretty sure those weren't the actual terms that we used and I can't find my revision notes. So we're gonna just kind of wing it a little bit. Okay, so I researched a little bit more before filming this video and I found out that CG Cookie uses a template very similar to what we used at the Only Academy. So I'm gonna kind of create like a combination version and my own version here. So I've split the diagram into thin at the top and thick at the bottom. And then on the left is like loose flowy type clothing. And on the right is like tight clingy type clothing. And then you'll see I've added my own section on the far right, which is called structured clothing. This whole like top section here is all thin clothing and the left hand side becomes more flowy and the right hand side becomes more like uh, clingy and, and tight. Thin clothes are sometimes transparent. They often let light through in some way and then it'll bounce around inside it and that will create like a subsurface scattering effect. Um, let's see if we can see that anywhere here. So on this one here, you can see how like white it is because the light is jumping through all those layers of fabric. Um, or this one might be a good one. You can kind of see where the fabric is like catching the light here. And it's like bouncing between the layer of the fabric and the skin. And then also here, it's really capturing the light and, letting, and holding it in the fabric itself. Thin fabrics are often affected by either the underlying form or the atmosphere, like wind. So this one you can see it's like captured the wind, which has kind of come up inside and gotten captured here. Or for example, we have this long flowing line, this line here, where they're being captured by the air. And then when we take a look at the tighter clothing, you can see all of the anatomy underneath, where that's affecting the cloth, and then especially on these really tight things, you, it's almost entirely just anatomy with a very thin layer um, on top. Here we can see a bit of a combination between both, so this kind of doesn't go straight up against the anatomy, it kind of comes out, but then this thinner material here is really just smack bang on the anatomy. One thing that um, I see a lot of people making this mistake because they copy old um, comic artists and stuff is where you draw the whole form of the chest underneath this material. Please don't do that, that's not what it looks like. <laughs> there will always be this kind of dragging motion. Even here on this really close tight knit slip dress you can see where it's kind of being pulled across the form and going from this bump to this bump like this and not like that yeah it's not tucking all the way underneath and sucking into the stomach and everything okay so all of these down here uh here are the thicker materials, okay? And then on the left we've got flowy, thick materials, and on the right we've got clingy, thick materials. Thick materials are often opaque and rich in color. Um, they'll often have really strong textures that you can easily see on the surface. 
they hold their own form naturally, so they're not going to be as affected by the wind as much. Um, the folds tend to be like chunkier, wider and more dramatic, whereas they're more thin and petite and um, subtle on the, the thinner clothing. And they tend to be affected by gravity and tension points the most, more than any other effects. So let's have a look at this. So on the thick flowy side, you can see that it's still holding its own structure. We've got kind of like a snowman patchy effect happening on this one. Here it's holding that overall rectangular shape, even though it is capturing the wind under here and getting pulled. Same thing here, like it's still keeping its shape, even though it is being dragged up, uh, away from the form. Here you can see it's the tension points that are the main thing affecting this and then gravity pulling it down rather than like wind then pushing it back up to move around or it being affected by the form as much. And the same thing here is the gravity kind of pulling down and making this rounded shape. When we look at the thick but clingy materials, we get quite a different story. Now you can see the anatomy, but it's not as strong as say like the tights versus the jeans. The tights, you can see like everything, like every single little piece of anatomy that's happening there. You can see every movement, every piece of flow. Whereas the jeans kind of have their own structure already. So you get these like chunkier, um, creases and folds and then you also have this general like strong shape happening in the clothing here as well you can see this you have these really strong angular um folds happening the whole way down the leg and again here like this is so thick that you can see the um folds kind of rolling up into much chunkier things than they would be on a thin material. Same thing here, look at these like zigzags here. So flowy or loose materials, they will tend to have a lot of movement, long action lines, um, and they follow the flow of the body movement and also the air. So like think about how your character's moving or posing, and also think about the environment and think about how that's gonna affect it. Tight and clingy clothes um, tend to show like a lot of the underlying anatomy. There's lots of creases and folds wherever there is give in the material or like where there are areas of the body bending or, or um, folding. Lots of the folds represent the material stretching. Um, smooth and shiny materials will create these like big obvious chunky reflections. Um, and you can still get those kind of chunky reflections on like flowing clothes but there's a high likelihood that they're going to get broken up by the folds or the movement of the fabric whereas something really chunky that holds a lot of its own weight or its own structure you're going to be able to see that nice strong highlight all the way down the um, down the material i guess the only one that doesn't apply to that would be like tights because it's almost like at that point something that thin is essentially just whatever shine you would get on the skin. Okay so I've made like a last category for myself called structured materials. Um, these are clothes that have been made in such a way that they essentially deliberately defy gravity. Like look at these colours pointing upwards or the fact that these um, pleats do not like waver. They, they're almost like crimped into an exact style or here we have these little zigzaggy designs or here it's being pulled back up away from the floor so these are clothes that have either been like starched in some way they've got wires or seams or maybe some other methods used to kind of create particular shapes and pleats um, that otherwise wouldn't really make any sense so you're stopping the material from acting the way it wants to act by doing something else to it. So here it's important to think about the qualities of the material itself, like is it thick or is it thin? What kind of texture does it have? Is it shiny? Is it rough and diffused? And then you can kind of think about, okay, how would that material act 
under the constraints or the tension of like a forced movement. So essentially, you can make any kind of clothing by combining, say, two of these traits, right? Taking something from here, so it's a thin piece of material and it's a loose and flowy way of using it. Then you know what you're working with. So once you know the basis of how to draw those individual things, you can draw basically anything at all. Okay, so I did some drawing earlier and I'm just gonna kind of talk over it to explain the next sections because it'll make it so much easier and you won't be sat here for the three hours it took me to draw all of this. <laughs> So now that we understand the different kind of kinds of material, let's take a look at the folds specifically. I actually didn't know that there were specific names of folds um, until I researched for this video. I think often you do these kinds of things with like instinct, um, just by thinking about what direction the material should be pulled in, where the tension points are, um, and where the material might be able to fall freely. But just to help us learn, let's take a closer look at each of the individual fold types. So the three most important things to ask yourself when you're working on a fold or a material is, where is the material being pulled or showing signs of tension? Where is the material relaxed or hanging freely? And where is the material scrunched up or falling on itself? Like where is it free and where is it collapsing? So by answering those three main questions, you're going to be able to figure out what fold you need to draw without really thinking about it too much. So here are the basics to get you started. Pipe folds. Pipe folds are long folds shaped like organ pipes that you find on dresses and curtains. And something you want to think about when you're drawing these is draw through the form so that you have the whole structure of the like tube of material drawn first and then rub out the bits that you don't need. That's going to make a way better um, description of like uh, where the material is curving. I also drew two different types of pipe folds so you could see them in different scenarios. The first one is where it's kind of pinched at the top and they're falling th freely but you do get the pipe folds where it's these individual pipes of material next to each other. And then the other one that I drew was one that you would see in like curtains or big drapery where it's kind of been pinched in the middle, but you can see the pipe running all the way from the very top down to the pinch and then back down to the floor. And this is a really good example of those very specific pipes that you're looking for. Right, zigzag folds are these sort of like alternating zigzags that crisscross across the form and you'll see them often in shirt sleeves and then also on the bottom of trousers where they start folding on themselves and the big identifying thing here is where you get that very strong Z or Z shape. You'll tend to see these becoming more angular on stiffer fabrics and a lot softer um, a lot more dainty on um, softer fabrics. Next we have spiral folds. These are only found when cloth is like wrapped around a cylindrical form, say a leg or an arm, and it's where you see like the fold coming up and it goes all the way round the circumference of the object and then you see it come back round on the side that you're on. So you're more likely to see a spiral fold on a thinner fabric and a zigzag fold on a thicker fabric. Half lock folds. For some bizarre reason, these are one of my favorites to draw. Um, this is where two folds sort of cross over each other due to the fabric being pulled in different two different directions. So you'll usually see this where there's like a, a strong bend in the fabric or, or like a sudden like turn in the fabric, especially like, um, I think here I've drawn it where the knee has bent and the bottom piece of fabric for the bottom half of the leg kind of comes up and covers over the fabric that's from the thighs. But you'll also see this like on a really big stiff material dress, maybe like a, a wedding dress, and you'll get like a big sheet of material that kind of like chunks back over and you get that, that half lock um, symbol. Okay, our next fold is a diaper fold, which is a very silly name. <laughs> um, the diaper fold is when a fabric is held or has tension at two points, 
and then it hangs freely between those two points. It's usually affected by what it's laying on or how it's being pinched or held originally, but you tend to get this characteristic U-shaped drop in the middle. You'll see this on things like drapery or also on um, like a, a top with like a scoop cut that's quite loose. Um, they're also affected by how thin or stiff the material is as well. Drop folds. These are folds that you see when a fabric hangs freely and loose. They are affected by what they are laying on or how they are pinched originally. So think about where the tension point is or what the object it's laying on is and that will decide how your fabric's going to pull. Um, they're also affected by how thin or stiff the material is as well. So like a thin material is going to move more, a thick material is going to have those much stronger lines. I've done two examples here, one where the fabric is kind of like hanging completely freely and the other one where there's a part of it that's being held and then the it's kind of falling down a little bit because of gravity more than anything else. Um, so both of them are affected by gravity but it's that one of them can move freely and the other one is like a freer bit of fabric on something that otherwise isn't very free. Like a piece of drapery wrapped around a dress. Something else to keep in mind when you're drawing your folds is how shallow or deep the folds are. So shallow folds can be drawn with a much gentler hand, um, perhaps almost disappearing into the rest of the fabric with like broken or tapered edges. Maybe use a little bit of white to kind of get rid of some of the lines and make it look a, a little daintier. Um, for a deeper fold, you would have a much broader line, a much thicker and, and stronger line. Um, perhaps a shadow being cast from the fold as well because it's, it's such a deep fold. So it's important to think about your fabric and how it's going to behave and affect the folds you draw. Also try to think about where the seams of the fabric are and also what the anatomy is doing under the clothing to help you draw the folds in the correct place instead of randomly guessing. Okay, so finally, here are some top tips for emulating different texture types. So, soft materials. Some examples of soft materials could be velvet or felt or cotton. Um, these will usually diffuse the light rather than reflect it back sharply. Even in a high shine material like velvet, it still reflects the light in kind of a scattered way where you can see all of the texture of the material behind it. Um, use curves and soft lines to match the clothing item and see if you can make it maybe oversized or voluptuous in nature to match the luxury or cozy feel of these softer fabrics. Some examples of fluffy materials could be wool or fur or my fluffy tail. <laughs> so draw the texture of the material instead of trying to draw straight lines or anything. Let the texture tell you the form. Um, but don't draw every single fibre. Try to group it into clumps and if it's been carefully like brushed down, you could have them all facing in the same direction or like near enough the same direction. Whereas if it's something messy, like I've, I've made this a bit more fluffier or messier, you can have those little clumps facing in different direction. Also try to shade in a way that matches the movement of those fibres. Um, and let the edges of the fabric catch the light more. Um, so you'll end up this sort of like little glow along the edges where the light's kind of caught inside of all of the all of the fibers, especially if the character is backlit. Try to keep them feathery rather than drawing any hard lines at all. Right, smooth and shiny materials. Some examples of shiny materials could be leather or plastic or silk and ribbon. Um, to create a high shine, Try using strong bands of bright reflected light. Um, remember to think about the light direction when you draw so that um, everything matches up across the entire garment rather than just the one section you seem to be highlighting. So you want to be able to like keep zooming yourself out whether you're traditionally need to walk away or you're on a tablet like me and you zoom out manually. Try and make it so that all of the light matches the same direction or like goes across the whole garment in a band and maybe it's only broken up by the folds. When you're drawing uh, smooth and shiny materials, try not to show much texture like at all on the surface and instead like let the light and the shadow and the values speak for themselves. Rough materials. Some examples of this might be jeans or corduroy or maybe like a rough wool, something with a lot of texture. 
This is where you want to focus your effort on just showing the texture rather than focusing your effort on the um, lighting. Look carefully at references of the material you're trying to emulate to kind of understand what the texture looks like in real life and how you're going to emulate it in your piece. Remember that you don't have to meticulously copy the texture. You can show the texture more clearly in areas of focus and then let it fade away into either the shadows or the areas of the image that you don't want the person looking to uh, notice as much. You want to use both solid and broken lines to describe the textures. And if you're working in like a manga style, you can use like photo textures or anything like that. Uh, if you open up a, a manga book, you'll see that where they've like cut out a manual texture and stuck it in. This works really well for these rough textures. And our final type of texture today is sheer textures. These are things where you can kind of see through it slightly, like chiffon, organza, lace or tights. Sheer materials both let light through, allowing them to glow, as well as showing the colours underneath, um, such as the skin or other layers of material. Use white in your arsenal to create broken lines, as well as areas where the lower layers kind of appear and disappear throughout the fabric. Um, when folding or patterning makes that area more opaque, make sure you show that a lot as well. You can use colour, white or detailing to help show that change in texture. And then some sheer fabrics have a repeating texture, such as tiny dots. So it can be really fun to put this in all over the material and then choose where you're showing the actual, like, the form underneath or not. Okay, so today we looked at the main material traits, the types of folds, and also some tips for different textures. I'm going to upload a video after this that will be me drawing an outfit made up entirely of each kind of of material. So for example thin and flowy and then the next one would be thick and flowy. So that you can kind of see these different techniques put into practice. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Thank you for the love. I would massively appreciate it if you hit that like button and the subscribe if you haven't already and drop down a comment down below about what you'd like me to draw next. Bye! <laughs>